Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. The White House announcing new sanctions on the anniversary of Russia's invasion into Ukraine and world leaders renewing their vow to support the Ukrainian people. NTD's Iris Tao has more from the White House. Marking the one-year anniversary of the war, President Biden and leaders of the G7 countries vowed to back Ukraine for as long as it takes. In a joint statement on Friday, the leaders say their solidarity will never waver in standing with Ukraine, adding that Russia's attacks over the last 365 days have laid bare the cruelty of the ongoing aggression. And the U.S. Defense Secretary adds... And you can expect that the international community will be with Ukraine uh, once the fighting stops. The Defense Department on Friday announced a fresh $2 billion aid package for Ukraine. That includes more rounds for rocket launchers and more artillery ammunition. And the White House adds... Secondly, the United States has begun now dispersing almost $10 billion in grant financing to help Ukraine meet the critical needs of its citizens. Meanwhile, a Fox News poll shows the American public is divided over how much longer the U.S. should support Kyiv with weapons and funding. 50% say it should be as long as it takes to win, while 46% say it should be for a time limited. All this as the U.S. announced a new round of sanctions targeting Russian and Chinese companies. The White House says they're supporting the Russian military and sustaining its war machine. Reporting from the White House, Aris Tao, NTD News. Are more and more American children identifying as a different gender without their parents' knowledge? A new report finds that more than 3 million students are now allowed to change their name and pronouns at school without parental consent. The new report comes from the Defense of Freedom Institute for Policy Studies. It finds that eight of the nation's 20 largest school districts allow students to use their preferred names and gender pronouns at school without parental knowledge or consent. They include New York City's Department of Education, Los Angeles Unified School District, and Chicago Public Schools. Only three of the largest 20 school districts have readily available policies requiring parental notification if a child does want to use a different name. And joining us to discuss this study, we have the author of the report, Angela Marabito, is spokesperson for the Defense of Freedom Institute for Policy Studies and a former U.S. Department of Education press secretary, and we are happy to have her on to discuss. Angela Morabito, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, Angela. So if I could just ask you, what is the rationale behind allowing students to change their uh, names and pronouns without consulting their parents? And just how widespread of an issue is this? Well, I'll answer the second part first. It is more widespread than we ever knew. There are more than 3 million students in, in America from kindergarten all the way through their senior year of high school who are allowed to change their name and pronouns at school without their parents knowing, but not to take an Advil from the school nurse. And the rationale for this is really just uh, school bureaucrats who think they know better than parents. They think parents can be cut out of the conversation and that they should be the ones in charge of major decisions in a child's life. And that's just not true. This report is really about the acute need to put control back in the hands of parents. And to your point, how are schools addressing the concerns of parents who ultimately object to their you know, child changing their name and pronouns without their knowledge? Well, oftentimes the school just hides it. We've seen multiple instances of districts telling teachers, hey, if you have to call home to a child's parents, use their name on their on their, you know, their legal forms. Use, use the uh, pronouns that align with their uh, sex as, as identified at birth. Um, so, so there's a lot of secrecy that, that goes on here with schools willing to conceal what's going on. Uh, there are also school districts that come right out and say, if the parents object, we do not care. The school district will... will uh, go along with whatever the student says, even if the parents say, no, this is wrong, we don't want it. So what are the legal implications here? And as you mentioned, uh, you know, why is parental consent required for access to over-the-counter medication, but not for changing one's name or pronouns? Well, the medication rules come from a much more sane time uh, in American education policy when the rights of parents were recognized and respected. Uh, now you have schools saying, oh, well, it's about privacy law. 
uh, that we can't disclose a child's transgender status. But that's just not true. There is absolutely nothing that ought to preclude a school from letting parents in on major issues going on with children. Uh, if a child has a tummy ache that lasts for an afternoon, that merits a phone call home. But if a child rejects his or her own body, you have districts that are instructing their teachers to hide it from the parents. Uh, it, there's got to be a change. It's got to happen at the state and district level. And it's got to happen with parents waking up and realizing that parental rights, unfortunately, just cannot be taken for granted anymore. It seems like um, much of this is being forced and is almost becoming the default rather than, um, you know, having things in place to educate the children. Um, are there efforts in place for counseling, especially now that we're seeing more and more stories of regret from young people who transitioned in their adolescence and then uh, regret it? I can honestly tell you I haven't seen a single instance of the school providing counseling that would say, hey, maybe pump, pump the brakes. Maybe this is the big decision and you know parents ought to be let in on it. Uh, I've seen a, a very small number of districts, honestly, just three of them that require parents to be aware of a child trying to change their gender at school. But none of them say, we're gonna sit down and really get to the bottom of what's going on with this with the student. I've seen plenty of instances where schools say, well, if a, if a child's family is unsupportive, we'll refer the family to counseling. It assumes that whatever the child says is accurate, even if that child is five years old and the parents are being utterly ignored and disrespected. What, sh what should parents know about their rights in some of these situations? Is there anything that they should know that you can advise them on? Oh my gosh, parents should know everything. I can tell you I learned personally so much in this report just by going up and looking at uh, school board policies. These schools are pretty obvious about what they do. They are not hiding the fact that they will hide a child's gender confusion or, or, or whatever you would want to call it. Uh, so I think parents can no longer say, well, not my child, not my district. Well, I don't live in a big blue woke district, so it won't happen to me. That's not true. We found this in major cities and small towns alike uh, that are saying that they will cut parents out of something so absolutely critical. So there is really no part of the country where parents can afford to say, we're going to skip this entirely. Every parent should be looking at what their school district's rules are and making sure that if those rules cut them out, that they step up and have a say. Angela Morabito, thank you so much. Thank you. More than 91,000 encounters at a single sector of the border since last October. Border Patrol in Yuma, Arizona, processing around 400 to 600 illegal immigrants each and every day. Lawmakers on the House Judiciary Committee traveled to the border city this week for an on-site hearing. NTD is on the ground in Yuma to examine the current situation at the border. Here's a look. Just ahead of sunrise, a line of illegal migrants wait along the border wall in Yuma, Arizona. One man saying he decided to cross illegally. Because this is the only way right now. We cannot come in legally. Their goal to be processed by Border Patrol and make it into the interior of the country. This area will be anywhere from four to 650 a day right now with the current numbers. Where are they coming from and why are they here? Georgia, yes. China. He says he's from Peru. Um, he also says that it took him five days. For some, it took longer. A few people from China say it took them 46 days. The Chinese nationals tell NTD they are fleeing the Chinese Communist Party's repressive ideology. Faith, freedom, freedom of speech. We have no rights at all. The CCP to people is a kind of cruelty. She decided to come to America three years ago after the start of the pandemic. The lack of medical resources during the pandemic reminded her of when she was a victim of China's one-child policy 20 years ago. I lost two of my babies. One was eight months old and the other was 23 days old. No medicine. There's been a spike in the number of Chinese people crossing illegally, a 719 percent increase year over year. Lawmakers on the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing in the border city this week. They met with local officials and toured the border, where many gaps remain along the border wall. This is where the wall ends. DHS says that will fill in gaps. Construction is expected to be completed this summer. 
Congressman Matt Gaetz, who is pushing to impeach the SA Secretary Mayorkas, accuses the administration of not having the will to secure the border. And that puts the needs of our citizens behind the ambitions, financially and otherwise, of criminal gangs, thugs, and cartels. Republicans also say the fentanyl crisis is a result of the open border. I mean, once again, what is it? Quadrupled the amount of fentanyl that's coming into America in the last couple years. There's a direct correlation to opening the border and the fentanyl coming in. No Democrats in the Judiciary Committee attended the field hearing, calling it nothing more than a political stunt. Democrats say they plan to take their own trip to the border next month. Reporting in Yuma, Arizona, Jackie Rios, NTD News. Astronomers have cited something surprising outside of our solar system, and it's challenging theories about how planets are formed. NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite discovered the Forbidden Planet. That's what it's called because of its unexpected size. Researchers say that the planet is about the size of Jupiter. They say it's extraordinary to find such a large planet orbiting a smaller star. That solar system is about 280 light years from Earth, and scientists now plan to continue observing the planet using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.